Hello, welcome to Los Andor Kids. My name is Elisa and this is my channel where I usually talk about sewing and style related things. But today I decided to make a video on how to start feeling better after a breakup. So I'm going to talk about nine things um, that I feel are important to me. So I'm splitting up with my long-term boyfriend of five years. We have a house together. I'm rebuilding my whole understanding of how my life is going to happen from now on um, because I had a different idea, but now things changed. Um, and this is what I find the most useful. The things that help me deal with the situation and keep afloat. So the first one I'm going to say is the most important one is the moral support. So the moral support of your family, your friends, and if you're going through a serious trauma like a bereavement or I don't know, like really, really bad breakup, you can actually join a support group where you'll find um, people who are going through the same situation and it does help to know that you're not alone in this. Um, I know women um, statistically are much better talking about things and expressing and therefore women tend to not bottle things up on, on the most part and so they kind of deal with their stress expressively so i think for men sometimes it's hard to admit that they have a problem or they have like a heartache or you know so i do advise to just find somebody who you trust and somebody who's known you for a while maybe and somebody who's prepared to just be there for you and listen so um, for me obviously i have a really amazing support network of my friends um near and far you know um and also i'm just lucky to have surrounded myself with people who understand me um, and sometimes even offer their support without me asking so that's the number one thing to get you going on a road to your fabulous single dom or you know your next amazing relationship number two I've decided to put on a list as a second most important one is actually exercise and when I say exercise I don't mean like sweating in a gym and I hate going to the gym I really don't care to do excessive exercising or straining myself or making myself do exercise I don't want to do when I mean exercise I mean moving your body so that you feel alive <laughs> So in the past few years, I have been so content and happy with my sedentary hobby, which is sewing. I didn't do much of getting up and walking around even, like I didn't do much movement at all. And now my body actually needs some exercise. So I've started walking, just literally walking. Well, I live in the UK and in Devon, so that's a very hilly area. <laughs> So, you know, I don't just walk on a, on a, like a straight, like a flat line. I just go like this. And in fact, we had a, like a two, three days of rain and I felt like I was craving to get out of the house and go walking. Um, yesterday, it dawned on me that I didn't even count my steps. So I've, I've put the step count into my phone and I've actually clocked in in a couple of hours. I went for a walk with my friend, um, 12 southern steps. And that's really good and I feel like I want to go again so like any exercise if you want to go to the gym absolutely if you want to do some dance classes which are fun and which you don't even con consider exercising that's amazing I used to do partner dancing um, West Coast Swing um, for quite a few years um, and I have an amazing group of friends hopefully still waiting for me when I'm ready to come back if I decide to do that. So that's another thing, you can join like a partner dance. You know, I know in the UK there's Jive, uh, Modern Jive is very popular, um, Salsa, um, I used to do Kizumba as well. You know, there's so many fun dance classes you can join um, if you want to socialize and get some new friends and do some exercise without even realizing you're doing it you know that's an amazing thing to do you know there's things like yoga um, there's walking groups so anything 
anything, even, do you know what, even cooking, dancing in the kitchen whilst you're cooking, that even counts. You know, anything that breaks the sweat a little bit, anything that gets you, you know, that kind of uplifted feeling like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know what, I'm still kicking. <laughs> Uh, so that's that's um, a very important step. Now the third one I put down on there is a good night's sleep. Now two and three could be either way. So, so two and three could could um, um, move around maybe a bit. So it's not a secret that it keeps you from eating too much during the day from from binging. It, it helps you focus better, do your job, which means you will then feel happier within yourself. You won't have a brain fog from not having enough sleep, not yawning, not thinking, oh, you know, I just wish I could have enough, you know, stuff, stuff like that um, is very important. And I am one of the worst people of going into bed on time, like in the evenings, I just want to play, you know, I just want to like do stuff. I am literally just like try to postpone going to bed for as long as I want. But these days I've decided to just go into bed, read, not my phone but just read books or look at my i don't know style books or history of clothing books you know stuff like that that makes me happy wind down and then i actually start yawning and feeling tired naturally and i notice it and i know this is a good time to go to sleep so these days um i'm actually quite good and um, so yes try to have a good night's sleep especially if you're waking up early like myself Okay, so the next one um, I'm going to put down as one another one of the essential things that you need to keep an eye on is eating well. And by eating well, I mean try not to eat too heavily because when you do that, that makes you tired. And amongst other things, um, I think things like pasta and pies and bread, not I'm not saying you can't eat that, but I'm saying I wouldn't eat it every day, for example, because it does get very heavy on you in many, many ways. I feel at the moment gravitated towards a lot of greens, genuinely, like I want things crunchy green, you know, like like natural, natural things. Um, I substituted my sweet treats for fruits. So if after meal I want something sweet, instead of going for a piece of chocolate, I'm just going to have a peach or, you know, um, or a satsuma, you know, something like that. Um, I'm drinking um, probiotic little bottles. You know, you can find them in supermarkets. They have like all sorts of like um, fruit, fruit flavors um, that are really good for your gut that uh, promote a good bacteria and that in turn will keep you healthy and happy and your eyes sparkling. Um, and also I try not to eat after six o'clock in the evening. Um, and that to me, you know, that is end of my eating day. And after that I can have a glass of water, even a cup of tea if, I'm, if I really want to. Um, another thing is I stop drinking caffeine um, just because I've been having like heart palpitations and I was really worried about it and I've been actually told why don't you just stop drinking caffeine and see what happens and you know what it really helped <laughs> I'm so bad I used to drink that much coffee that I couldn't even like taste it anymore <laughs> um, but um, these days I have a cup of tea maybe I don't know every other day I don't know maybe three three times a week I'll have either a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. And if I'm on the weekend, I'm going out into town, I'll have a proper cup of coffee in a coffee shop. And that's a treat, not, and it's not everyday thing for me. Then another thing that I stopped drinking is alcohol. Not that I drank lots of it, but I barely drank, but now I really kind of don't want to, even if I get offered, like for example, we're at home and Neil will say, you know, would you like a glass of wine? Cause I'm opening a bottle and I'm like, no, Really, no. I really don't see the point of it um, because for me, wine or a drink is something that you have on occasion. Um, now, I used to drink, have a drink every weekend, 
um, just to celebrate, you know, Friday drinks and then I'd go out and have like a, on a Saturday, a couple of drinks on Saturday, you know, never, never really drinking heavily, but it's just kind of like the usual thing. But now I really don't care to do that. So I think that actually helps as well um, to feel better within myself. Um, and also, you know, let's face it, I'm no spring chicken. So um, <laughs> I think the less I drink these days, the better I probably feel later on because I have to start thinking about my health going forward, you know, being 44, you know. And um, so another thing I feel that would actually benefit would be keeping a diary. Um, I know it's not everybody's thing, but I think there's something about writing down your thoughts with your hand on a piece of paper and seeing them and then reading them. There's something that is very healing about it. And I know there's like different techniques of doing it and there are tips and tricks in there, but basically what I would say just get yourself a nice like a like a paper pad or something or a nice if you want a fancy little diary book you know whatever rocks your boat just do that and just write down the things like what things that worry you um things that make you happy things you're grateful for um and just do a couple of paragraphs every day and i think if you read that back at some point maybe in a couple of years you would feel probably nostalgic and also grateful for how resilient you are you know um, that, that definitely happened to me in the past, so um, I've actually got a, a special diary I bought of Christmas, of New Year's um, and it has questions and it has like tasks in it, so I need to dig it out and I need to start doing that again and follow my own advice, why, why don't I do that? <laughs> Another thing is um, I find that listening to podcasts and YouTube videos on a subject like whatever whatever is interesting you at the moment so as we're now talking about um, you know being newly single or recovering from a bad breakup or any anything related to that I think it would really be advantageous if you would spend a little bit of time listening to somebody else talking about it um, and some of it will be trained professionals and some of it will be just people with similar experience. Um, so I usually, when I do some ironing or I do some cooking, I just put some YouTube videos on or a podcast um, and I just listen to it. And you know, it does kind of reiterate to your, to your inner mind that you, you know, what's happening to you is actually not that uncommon and loads of people dealt with it and this is how you do it and this is why this is happening and you know there's different ways of doing so it's like you just get extra reassurance um, I think and um, in fact I've listened to a couple of videos and I was like this is the best thing that's happening to me and that really helped me realize that this is actually what's meant to be happening. So I would suggest just finding a few podcasts um, or maybe even humorous programs, you know, anything in the subject that would make you feel like this is not such a big deal in fact, you know, like everybody's going through it at some point or another. So I'll, I'll put that on the list. Another thing to me is little appearance revamps. So I would put in there things like change your hair or don't even have to cut your hair. You can just style it in a different way. You know, um, do, a diff do a makeup in a different way that, than what you used to. Just feel, just see yourself from a different angle, you know. Surprise yourself with the way you look because um, I know whilst what's happening on the ins inside is very important but also what's happening on the outside is very important too especially when you're going through life changes you know buy yourself a new lipstick of, of the different color you know go ask um, um, the beauty consultants you know what what would you recommend like what, what shade of lipstick would you recommend you could be surprised and you could be rediscovering yourself all over again you know um, go have your nails done um, you know buy yourself a different dress buy yourself like um, yeah don't go like spending all your money 
but just little things you know um just little changes go get some spray tan if you've never tried it you know things like that live a little be a little daring be unexpected um, to yourself most of all do it for yourself don't do it for anybody else um, i think that could probably put a little spring in your step as well and then another thing is very important to spoil yourself a little bit little treats not like i said not a shopping spree spending all your money and then not having enough to like buy food for the rest of a month <laughs> I'm speaking to myself right now, but no, I, I wouldn't do that. But um, get a new perfume. Buy an interesting book as a treat that will keep you entertained or lift up your mood. Um, go to the movies, even on your own. I went to the movies on my own and it's very liberating, in fact. Put on your favorite music and put it on out loud, not like in your earphones. Just turn it up in the house. I've missed doing that since you know i've been living with with my boyfriend because i didn't want to disturb him just in case if he doesn't like my music but i'm really looking forward to living on my own and putting on the music and just listen to it all day long to the music that makes my soul happy get yourself a plant i don't know um go on a little trip somewhere in the uk we have national trust places where we can go and have a day out and visit a an old house that's been preserved with all the vintage and ancient um, things and furniture and things in it um, and you know just just to have a day out um, you know if you're a sewist go fabric shopping you know just don't buy too much just for the experience just kind of spoil yourself a little bit with something you don't usually do on a daily basis something that will lift your mood and then you come home and you'll be like Oh, that was just such a great day, you know, so you have to do that because those little puzzle pieces of little happiness um, and excitement here and there kind of slot together into a big picture of you being happy within yourself and with your life on a long run. And the last thing um, I'd like to say that is important is to learn to be alone. Whether it's learn to be alone or learn to be alone again. Because I know some people don't like being alone. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. And in fact, I would rename it to learn to be alone and enjoy it. And I don't mean it for the rest of your life, unless you want to. What I mean is you have to spend the time with yourself without anybody influencing what you're doing what you're eating you know because when you're with somebody else whether that's a friend or a partner you have to take into consideration what they want to do and that changes the dynamics of your whole life um, or, or whole day you know depends on how long you spend together um, but like for me I love it when I make all the decisions myself so if I wake up in the morning and I'm thinking do I feel like staying in or going out? Yeah, I feel like going out. Where do you want to go? Oh, I've been meaning to go. And I just literally just do it. Um, and then I eat what I want to eat. Or I don't eat. If I don't have, if, if I'm not hungry, I won't have lunch. As if I'm, if I'm with another person, I would be asking them, would you like to have lunch? And I would be like super polite and not, try not to show that I'm actually not hungry, not to make them feel uncomfortable. Do you know what, what I mean? You have to be happy in your own company with your own thoughts and enjoy it um, and in fact the only time when you learn to do that you will then be able to show people the real authentic your, you um, what you are and not what you see reflecting from other people's eyes and, and perception of you so this is just the nine things that i threw together that I wanted to talk about for myself more than anybody else out there but just I just thought if I document it and if I put it on a video I will be able to then refer to it myself um, and maybe you never know I might add some things later on I might make another video I don't know if you've gone through from being a couple into being single tell me do you agree with my points or is there something that you would like to add and just tell me about your experience 
um, because obviously this is not the first time I'm, I'm breaking up with somebody but um, every experience is different and I believe that you can learn from other people as much as you can learn from your own past so I'd love to see your comments I'd love to see what you think and whether you agree with me or not and I hope to some of you even if it's a one person this video was helpful um, this is it for now I hope to see you soon. Love you all. Bye.